Here's our timeline on this Wednesday afternoon. Our Josina Anderson reporting former Broncos coach Vance Joseph will interview with the Bengals this week. And ESPN as well as other outlets reporting that Chiefs offensive coordinator, coordinator Eric Bieniemy is interviewing with the Jets and also the Bucks as early as today. Glad to have you with us for NFL Live. I'm Wendy Nix, Josina Anderson, Coach John Fox and Teddy Bruschi. We've got plenty of coaching news some playoff games to break down, of course, as we look ahead to Wild Card Weekend. But we start with one of the guys we needed to hear from regarding the saga and Antonio Brown. The fallout from the knee injury that was or wasn't continues amid reports that Antonio Brown was benched for the Steelers' season finale against the Bengals on Sunday. Ben Roethlisberger said yesterday he wasn't aware of any practice blow up. And today, Mike Tomlin picked up a story of what happened after he sent Brown home on Friday. After uh, Friday's business was done, um, it became difficult to, to communicate and catch up with him. Um, I wasn't able to communicate with him on Friday evening or Saturday morning. So when we had our Saturday morning mock game or walkthrough and he was unavailable and we hadn't communicated with him, then it became something altogether different. I woke up Sunday morning, got a call from uh, his agent, Drew Rosenhaus, Drew Express, uh, that he was feeling better and that he would potentially be able to participate. I outlined to Drew that decisions weren't made like that, uh, but I would be interested in visiting with him in person at the stadium prior to the game, um, but playing wasn't on the menu. Obviously, we take his lack of communication, his lack of presence, particularly on Saturday prior to the game, uh, to be something that's very significant and will be ha handled appropriately so. Um, I'm not going to speculate um, on trades and things of that nature. Uh, we haven't formally received a request in that regard. Um, so I'm not going to speculate. I'm not going to speculate in terms of where the discipline might go and things of that nature. Just know um, that it's going to be addressed, and it will be addressed, and needs to be addressed uh, for obvious reasons. When we're talking about the, our darkest hour, okay, we're talking about playing to win a game and needing other dominoes to fall uh, for us to be in the tournament, and 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 the guy not communicating. That is a real element of discussion, certainly. From a financial perspective, Brown carries $21.1 million in potential dead money next season. If he were to be cut or traded, the only wideouts with more would be OBJ and Sammy Watkins. They could cut or trade Brown with a post-June 1st designation, and his cap hit would drop to $7, 7 million. But that needs to be done by the fifth day of the 2019 league year. Not the position anybody really wants to be in, Coach, but... Uh, a lot of layers here. Let's just start with the first one, which is what did you think of what Mike Tomlin had to say? Well, first of all, I hope Mike Tomlin has a great vacation plan. He needs he's a break, need, man. He uh, needs a break. This has been a long, long yes. season. And so that's the first thing I'm hoping Mike Tomlin gets to do. But, you know, Mike didn't have any choice, and he's right. And that locker room should be upset. I know the coaching staff would be upset. I mean, when you go flashback to last week, you're going in to play a division opponent. You know, for, for all the marbles, for the opportunity that did make a really up and down season, long, hard season, come to fruition. That is to get into the tournament, and all of a sudden you don't have arguably your best player on your football team uh, for whatever reason, for however it works. The darkest uh, hour, Coach. The uh, darkest, darkest hour. Darkest hour. Yes. I mean, yes. that's, that's you know, it's like, hey, dude. Um, <laughs> so I can understand people yeah. being upset. I'd be upset, too, and uh, where it goes, who knows? I mean, ac according to Mike Tomlin, he, he let the team down. Uh, he let yeah. the team down by not communicating about his injury, probably not following protocol in terms of how they handle things within the Pittsburgh Steeler organization. Is there an injury? There are certain steps you have to take to we want to make sure that you're able to get back on the field. No communication. Mike Tomlin says enough's enough. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're not going to play. And if, for you to try to get your agent to call <laughs> and, and, mean, come and, and say you're ready to go now, it's just not the way things are done in terms of coming back from any type of ailment or any bump or bruise or anything like that. There are trainers, there's protocol, there's a stealer way, and it wasn't hand, It wasn't well, followed. We're going to come back to that in just a minute, but Josina, I'll ask you this, first of all, what your sources are saying in Pittsburgh, but while I ask you that, we'll also show you that Antonio Brown isn't quiet necessarily. He tweeted during Mike Tomlin's press conference. Mm. Uh, you can read it in entirety, but basically we'll go with the Happy New Year. Be great. How about that? We'll just <laughs> leave it at that. Uh, but he, he was clearly aware that his head coach was speaking and speaking about this. Uh, what are you hearing? 
Well, the first thing, let me just address that uh, statement that was just up. The one thing that is missing from that statement is an apology and a, I'm sorry. So that, that's right. the one thing that stands out to me from that, particularly when you have Cam Haywood making a statement and saying very, very unequivocally that this was unacceptable, you know, not participating, leaving at halftime, all of those things are being made clear. However, what I do want to point out is that, you know, just talking to my sources, someone who's familiar with the thinking up top of the organization, uh, they are saying, you know, is this an unfortunate situation? Yes. Does it look good? No. But they also tried to keep it measured, just like you heard Mike Tomlin and his tone in the press conference by saying it's not, quote, of extreme concern. One, they put in the perspective on it is saying that this is not happening while the Pittsburgh Steelers are still in the postseason. This would be even so much more magnified if they were playing. And the truth of the matter is they do have time to further assess the situation with Antonio Brown. You heard Mike Tomlin allude to the fact that he is going to talk to them. He said during the press conference that they are going to gather more facts and make sure that they understand. But at the same time, they also know the difference between LeGarrette Blunt hmm. and the team letting LeGarrette Blunt go immediately after he walked out Monday Night Football 2014 and releasing him the next day on Tuesday is that they have way more of an investment in Antonio Brown. This is a guy that's been setting records in receiving yards and touchdowns since he came into the league in 2011. So what I'm saying, Coach, what I'm saying, Teddy, is Antonio Brown doesn't grow on a tree. And so right. that's why you also hear Mike Tomlin being measured with his word choice and when he's saying that he couldn't get in touch with him on uh, Saturday, couldn't get in touch with him on Friday and saying that there's an element of disappointment. Element of dis disappointment is a euphemism because he right. knows that Antonio Brown's listening and they do have to be measured with what they're going to do. And know, then knowing all that, you, I'm still going to sit you for the most important right. game of the year that we <laughs> yeah. needed, our darkest hour. Then you're letting us yeah. down. We still don't need you and we're still going to win the game. Well, and they did. And they did. Yeah. Well, you know what? Le'Veon Bell, so 2018 for Jeremy Fowler, okay? <laughs> I mean, come on. 2019? Don't worry. We've got A.B. Hello, Jeremy. Uh, listen, welcome back. Uh, Happy New Year once again, and you were there for Mike Tomlin's press conference today. Where do you think this goes from here? Well, Wendy, you got to love Pittsburgh. It is never a dull moment here. <laughs> we're starting the year off with just more drama, and, and drama right now apparently with Antonio Brown doing an Instagram Live post uh, here soon with James Harrison. But, Wendy, I was in that room asking questions, and there was quite the tone set. You had about 60 people in there, questions firing left and right. It was different than most weeks. And, you know, Tomlin tried to set a tone the best he could. He was measured, as Josina said, certainly. But he sounds like a guy who's fed up with a lot of things, especially the way they ended. And these kind of quotes struck out to me when he was asked specifically about Brown, whether at some point the negatives outweigh the positives. He said, certainly, alluding to that darkest hour that Brown left them in. And I asked him, did Brown quit on this team? He said, you can call it what you want to call it. And so Tomlin is a coach right now who's really keeping you know, nothing on the table. He's embracing all potential changes, whether that's with the trade of an all-pro or not. He said, we simply have to wallow in the issue that we faced ourselves in. Well, and I'm afraid he's right. He was also the coach that said prior to that game, you know, we made our bed, we'll lie in it, and they and they have, and they will continue that to bed do is so. Still messy. And it yeah, is still not really extremely right comfortable, now. Teddy. But as a player, wins enough enough uh, in a locker room. Well, the first thing I want to see is my head coach being act proactive. I mean, doing doing what he can to make sure this doesn't Did happen. Did you again. see that? What else could he have done? Yeah. What else could he have done in terms of discipline? In terms of trying to trying to take control of his locker room by basically taking his best player and saying, we don't do this here, man, and we don't need you. So sit him down when apparently, according to Drew Rosenhaus, he was healthy and he was ready to go. But still, we won't address this Monday after we potentially win and the Browns beat the Ravens. No, right now, that's it, man. You got to go because Friday, Saturday, what you did and not communication. That's all I can ask for from my head coach because now it goes on. Now it goes back on to Antonio Brown to where the players now say, man, what are you doing? What are you doing? Because you're getting to the point where a coach is now suspending you for games. We need you out here to win football games because you're our best offensive player. You know, help us win football games. So I, I only can ask my head coach to do everything he possibly can, and Mike Tomlin did in this situation. And you're always building the, you know, that culture of accountability and dependability, and even your star players. I mean, in fact, on really good championship football teams, your star players are those guys, and they're carrying that hammer where it doesn't get to this. Well, yeah, I would argue especially your star players. Yes. And I just I go, go to 
go to his t I mean, his tweet with the with the picture of of course of him talking about free will and all of that stuff and all of it's you know it's true and he has all of that because you know you're an American citizen citizen congratulations and all that good job good job it's, good job. it's an good NFL job. team there are different rules within an NFL team where you have to hold each other where you have to hold each other accountable I mean this type of stuff. I mean, yes, you're... you're so you're, this you're, wasn't a patriotic statement no, you're, you're, you're divinely, <laughs> you're divinely blessed with free will, yes, but Yay. you're giving up so much of yourself when you're a part of a team <laughs> to be there and to be there for other for, for a bunch of other guys that are there to, ho to help you win football games. That, that's what being a part of, te of a team is all about. You're no longer an individual. You're a part of a group. And I don't think Antonio understands this, where he's, he's about to do an Instagram... Live interview mm. with James Harden, which don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. I'll no. tell you right now if you're what watching What Teddy's this, alluding stop. to is don't that even, Antonio Brown right also no. tweeted today that he would do Bad a live decision. interview on Instagram with James Harrison, who's not exactly thrilled with the Steelers. We should also point out there's some context there. Uh, that has not happened yet to our knowledge, but that's, uh, listen, what could go wrong? Yeah. But you know, I just wanted to say, I think that what the players in the locker room, or at least Cam Haywood as a voice of that locker room, is saying that. They're looking for something a little bit more punitive in terms of the type of discipline that Antonio Brown receives because it is not just what happened this weekend. What you seem to be hearing is, uh, you know, frustration from an aggregate of things that have happened over a period of time in terms of feeling like it has gotten out of, you know, control to the point where a player would be leaving at halftime of a do or die game. Mm. Listen, he's been productive on the field. We cannot argue that. Ben Roethlisberger and Brown have connected for 74 touchdowns since they've become teammates in 2010, the second most by any quarterback-receiver combo during that time. But it has come with a lot of other issues to be continued, and we'll keep you updated as we know more. We'll stay in Pennsylvania, but now we will talk about games this weekend, shall we? And we'll start <laughs> with the defending champs despite leaving last Sunday's regular season finale with a chest injury. Nick Foles will start this weekend's wild card game against the Bears. Foles and his head coach Doug Peterson addressed the media today. This is a different season now. Um, you know, you're in the postseason, so, you know, obviously expectations increase, sense of urgency increases, um, speed of the game gets faster. I think we benefit from last year, having been in the postseason, a lot of our guys on this team, and we've had even the new additions to our team have, have been in the postseason before. So I think we can lean on those experiences. This last stretch, there wasn't, you know, a high percent chance of us even being in, in this situation we're in now. Um, I think that experience helps us, but, you know, the momentum part is simply confidence, confidence in one another. And with that confidence, that belief in one another, um, you can go out there and do great things. So we've been able to do that the last several weeks. Those weeks don't mean anything right now because we're in a new week. So we just have to continue to believe that way, continue to prepare that way. And I'm going to sound like a broken record, but that's simple. I mean, I can say all these different things, but it doesn't mean anything. The second I, I hit the field, that's what matters. Philly has gone four and one this season with Nick Foles as its starting quarterback. The biggest difference from Carson Wentz has been their ability to finish drives. The Eagles have been far more efficient once they get to the red zone with Foles and have scored a touchdown on 89% of their goal to go drives, which would have led the NFL in the regular season. And for more on the Eagles, we will say hello to Diana Rossini, who is in Philadelphia. And Diana, are there any issues at all with the injury uh, from last weekend with Nick Foles? Hey, Wendy. So Nick Foles says right now he's feeling a little bit sore, but he's drastically improving every single day. As for his plans this Sunday against the Bears, he says he's going to add a little bit of padding inside his shoulder pads for that protection, but he doesn't want to put too much in there because he wants to be able to move around against this very dangerous Bears defense. And when we asked him specifically about Chicago and what he expects to see, it's actually the first time I've heard a quarterback not mention Khalil Mack. Take a listen to what he's concerned about. The thing that I'm really impressed with is their secondary and the vision they can have with route uh, recognition and eyes on the quarterback. And they're going to you know, try to confuse my eyes. They're going to try to confuse us with different looks. And um, a lot sometimes defenses do that and they're not good at it and they, they get gassed. The thing I see with them is they're very good at it. All right, the truth is he did break up. 
Mack and uh, Hakeem Hicks later on uh, in the press conference talking about he knows how dangerous that they are and why the Chicago's Bears defense has been as good as they've been the last few weeks. But the other theme of the press conference, press conference wasn't about this Eagles team. It was about specifically Nick Foles. He is well aware that this could be his last week wearing an Eagles jersey. And once again, in traditional Nick Foles style, he just said he's been appreciative and he's confident that this won't be the last week he'll be wearing that jersey, meaning that they'll probably win in advance. Wendy? This man is cool under pressure, on the field or off. Diana, thank you. Uh, still to come on NFL Live, Wild Card Weekend is just about here. The Colts and Texans facing off for a third time this season. We'll take a look back at Luck and Watson throughout the first two matchups. And coming up, Eric Weddle joins the show. The Pro Bowl safety sits down with us to talk about the Ravens rematch with the Chargers. Turn for me. One and one against each other this season. That was Andrew Luck, 39 touchdowns this season, the most by a player who missed the previous seasons. As for his upcoming opponent, Luck had 863 passing yards against the Texans this season. The third most passing yards by any player against a single team in a season, only behind the likes of Joe Montana and Dan Marino. But according to Andrew Luck, there is still work to be done as he gets set to face the Texans for a third time this season. I think a small part of us understands how, how special it's been so far. Uh, and, and I said this afterward, fulfilling. You know, I feel this season in a sense that every game has been fulfilling, but satisfied, no. Not at all. I mean, we, we know there is work to do, and we know that it starts with today. It starts with getting better today. Everybody will do their Andrew Luck impression at the end of the show, I promise. <laughs> As for Deshaun Watson, 4,165 passing yards, 551 rushing. Only the third player in history to have 4,000-plus passing yards and 500 rushing yards in a season. Cam Newton has done it. So, too, has Russell Wilson. Now, everybody was open for Watson when the Texans face the Colts this season. In fact, according to NFL Next Gen Stats, 60% of Watson's pass attempts were thrown to open receivers. That's pretty good. It makes sense since the Colts allowed a league high 58% of passes to open receivers. Watson, however, not taking anything for granted. At the end of the day, you know, Coach always told me it's just football. I mean, it's, it's real stuff that's going on outside of, you know, that football field. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's just football. It's what you've been doing your whole life. So, uh, you know, just take it one play at a time. Don't make it bigger than what it is. And don't make it less than what it is. Kind of keep that balance. Keep it neutral. Keep it in the middle. Stay in your lane. Here's Bill O'Brien comparing the two quarterbacks. I think it has a lot to do with who they are in combination with the talent that they have, their will to win. Um, I think there's there's uh, there's a lot to be said for that, and, and those guys have have all that. What I see on tape, I don't see any differences. You know, I think that uh, relative to when he was playing before, when we played him here, played him in Indy, very difficult guy to go against. Arm strength, competitiveness. I see the same guy. You know, I, in in fact, in some of the things that he's doing, he's probably even better. A strong year for his own quarterback as well, Watson, but he has taken more than his fair share of licks. He's been pressured on a league high 41% of the time, basically two in every five dropbacks. Watson's been sacked 62 times uh, and contacted while running or throwing on 165 plays, both the most of any quarterback. And I think, Teddy, for a lot of folks, maybe you among them, that those big hits are a concern going into the weekend. Yeah, those, those are a concern going into the weekend. When you're in a meeting room with coaches, coach, how many years have you been in the league? Uh, 28. Like 28. 28. 28 if there's a physical, Give or take. There's a yeah. physical error where you get your butt kicked, sometimes it's excusable because the right. guy's just better than you. But these mental errors that you make, yeah. that's what drives coaches crazy. That's what drives players crazy when you just aren't on the same page. So right here, in terms of pressuring Deshaun Watson from a previous matchup, this is a simple three-by-one pressure. And if you see at the quarterback position, you got to recognize that DB's coming in. Deshaun looks startled. What I'm saying is he looks like, whoa, where'd that come from? Same thing here, three-by-one from the offense. Slot corner comes, inside linebacker comes, and you'll see Deshaun right here. Whoa, where'd you come from? He should be making adjustments. He should be getting rid of the football. And then offensive line, a simple little movement by the defensive lineman of the Indianapolis Colts, and he doesn't get blocked. You're not communicating along the offensive line either, so you're showing that 
You can't pick these simple movements and these simple pressures up. That's how they got to Desha Deshaun Watson this year. If they don't fix mental errors first, I mean, I mean their season's going to be one and done. Well, Coach, fair to say, whoa, where'd you come from? It's not what you're looking for. <laughs> no, no. There's a lot of preparation. Because there was a couple of, where'd, yeah. where'd you come from, right. Sarah? It's, it's hard enough in this league. You're going to get physically beat sometimes. That's what Teddy was referring to, and he's right. Is you just can't mentally beat yourself, and yeah. especially in a playoff. I mean, really, they were talking about the specialness of, of this season. Well, it's right. There's, there's three seasons in the NFL. Preseason, regular season, and then there's playoff season. And it picks up. So you cannot have mental lapses. You cannot be hesitant in anything you're doing. And that's really the difference to me in this game is, you know, the number of sacks and, and some of it mental, some of it physical. But they're 32nd in the league on, uh, you know, sacks per play in the National Football League. 62 sacks they've given up. 62. And let's be clear, this is a different football team with Watson not out there. We've seen that. I mean, oh. they need him. It's an understatement. You know what happens to be also out there. in terms of getting to the quarterback and Watson getting sacked? He believes that sometimes they, you just won't bring him down. Right. That he has the he has the ability to play somewhat of a hero ball type of aspect yep. of it, and I'm going to escape this blitz. It doesn't matter that I didn't see you because I still have the ability you got to get over that and, and become more of a quarterback, not trusting your ability, but trusting your mentality. Yeah, I mean, you like the confidence, but all that, you know, all that in a bag of chips will get you hurt. And that's, <laughs> that's not really what you're looking for either. All right, coming up on NFL Live, Raven safety Eric Weddle sits down. He loves, this man loves himself some ice cream. He'll tell you why and what to expect in the postseason.